often the most difficult part of solving any kind of real world problem, whether we're factoring or using the quadratic formula or whatever we happen to be, uh, be doing, the most difficult part is trying to figure out exactly how the words in the problem apply to the question you're actually being asked. So how can you, how can you basically translate the words into mathematics? So I'm just going to take one that uh, was sent in by a student named Leo um, who wanted a little help with a question about a garden and we'll uh, sort of more slowly go through the making up the problem and then more quickly go through the problem itself. He says he has a garden that is four meters by six meters so it's a rectangle and it's going to have a uniform border such that the area of the border is the same as the area of the garden and he needs to find the width of the border. So first let's sketch the garden itself. We know that it's four meters by six meters so I'm just going to really quickly sketch a, a rectangle here and we'll make it you know, approximately four by six as far as the ratio. There we go. We'll say this is four meters and this is six meters here, which means that, of course, the area of the garden, if it's a rectangle, is four by six, so the area of the garden itself is 24 square meters. Then he says it has to have a uniform border. So a uniform border means that the border is going to be the same width all the way around. So when we're done, the garden is going to be, obviously, the overall plot will be bigger than it is now. And if that border is uniform, then that extra width is going to be the same all the way around. Whatever this distance is, change colors here real quick, whatever this distance from here to here is, will be the same all the way around. So that's what we're actually looking for, the width of that border. So that's where our variable needs to be. So let's call this, this distance here x. Now we know that the total, and we'll call, we'll call this whole thing the, the area of the complete thing, we'll call t. t equals the total area. The total area then is going to be the long length here times the long length here. And if we want to find the width of the border, we need to find a border to add on to this initial garden so that the total area of everything is twice as big as the initial area. So the total area, if it's going to be, if the area of the border is going to be the same as the area of the garden, that total area is going to be two times the area of the garden, or two times 24 meters, which is, of course, 48 square meters, right? So then we just need to find a way to describe this total area. Well, if the inside dimensions are 4 by 6, and what we're doing is adding this, this extra distance x to both sides, then this one here, this dimension here, is going to be 4 plus 2x because we're going to add 1x distance here and 1x distance here. And then this dimension across the bottom is going to be 6 plus 2x because we're going to add the x dimension here and the x dimension here. So this one then will have those, those two extra x's on the sides and this one will have the two extra x's top and bottom. So 6 plus 2x is the new length, and 4 plus 2x is the new width. So then we can say that 6 plus 2x times 4, oops, I'm sorry, 4 plus 2x equals 48. Now we can sort of simplify some of our information. This was the hard part, trying to get to this point right here. So Recognize that the information told us we were going to add the same amount around all the way around the outside, that uniform border, that was a big deal. And knowing that the width of the border is what we're looking for was a big deal because that's how we knew what to assign our variable to. Now we can just foil this out, or uh, yeah, foil this back out so we get 6 times 4 is 24, and 6 times 2x is 12x, 2x times 4 is 8x and 2x times 2x is 4x squared equals 48 and then simplify everything and put everything on the left we'll get 4x squared plus 20x and then we'll move the 48 over so minus 24 equals 0 and now you just need to factor this and then solve for your two possible values your two possible values should come out to be 6 or 1
and I think you'll find that, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, uh, negative six or one, and I think you'll find that it's not possible for that border to be a negative value. So you should come up with your answer pretty easily at that point.